On this vote, the yeas are 273, the nays are 147. The bill is passed. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Former President Donald Trump has derailed bipartisan negotiations over FISA, and his influence shifted the bill considerably, but it did pass the House of Representatives earlier. Now, before the vote, it prompted fury from Senate Republicans over what they thought was a well-executed negotiation for a five-year deal. And now, House Speaker Mike Johnson is headed to Mar-a-Lago to meet with Trump as conservatives like Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene threatened to oust him from Speaker. Joining me now with the latest is my friend, my colleague, the anchor of The Hill's What's America Thinking, Julia Manchester. Julia, what are you looking for as Speaker Johnson heads on down to Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, look, I'm going to really be looking for, for you know, what essentially President Trump says um, about the conference. I mean, you know, is uh, Speaker Johnson going to be begging Donald Trump to essentially try to embrace him, try to, you know, maybe talk to Marjorie Taylor Greene, that kind of a thing. So Speaker uh, Johnson is going to need to really find an ally in Donald Trump right now. And that's going to be, uh, you know, I think right now he does have an ally with him, but so does Marjorie Taylor Greene. So I think I'm going to be watching for what President Trump essentially asks of Speaker Johnson, what, you know, he thinks Speaker Johnson should do going forward to unite the conference and whether former President Trump does anything to help that. Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, he's got to go see the boss is what it looks like in terms of Trump and his influence over the Republicans. It's only on more display. FISA originally was going to be a five-year reauth. Now it's a two-year reauth. So what was the big difference in, in terms of the policies? Essentially, Trump now, if he gets presidency again, can rework this, rewrite FISA in his presidency. Yeah, look, I mean, I think the big thing is, you know, the warrant, and quite frankly, this isn't my beat. Um, however, I think, um, you know, the, the warrant is going to be huge. I think Donald Trump, you know, could potentially work with Republicans in the House to sort of try to rewrite it. But um, we'll have to see. I mean, this is clearly something where there's divide in, you know, between in the conference between Republicans and Democrats. But for national security purposes, it really needed to be passed, um, according to people who supported it. But I think there's a real push for it to be changed. Well, for sure. And when you look at FISA, specifically the policy of it, here you have uh, the ability for there to be uh, intelligence gathered on Americans who come into contact, folks, uh, with bad actors overseas who are being investigated. And if they're in contact with Americans, it allows for the proper authorities to get to the bottom of that communication. Now, the Senate Republicans, they wanted a five-year reauthorization. But what Congressman Matt Gates did is he had some honestly strange political bedfellows on the left who he worked with to say, hey, wait a minute, this should only be a two-year reauthorization and should uh, be able to continue to be uh, kicked down the road, so to speak, if there is a Trump presidency. So that's really what happened here as it relates to the policy. And Senate Republicans didn't like that. They wanted more continuity and certainty. They argued that it was for national security reasons. Senate Democrats agreed with them. Switching gears now, but sticking with national security, developing now, Israel seems to be on heightened alert, Julia, for an attack by Iran and Israel sometime in the coming days. How are the Israelis preparing and how is Washington, D.C. prepping? Well, look, this comes at a time where there's really heightened tensions between the U.S. and Israel right now, particularly between between Biden and Netanyahu. However, we have seen uh, Washington very much embrace Israel right now. So obviously heightened security, um, you know, which is you know, obviously a big uh, big deal in Israel because they already have heightened security because of the Gaza war, but they're all on high alert. And I think there's uh, there are obviously U.S. troops in the region, allies that are very much on high alert. So they're looking out for anything obviously nefarious and such, but this is something that is uniting Washington in Israel. Politically, back to 2024, former Obama advisor Ben Rhodes says that Jared Kushner engaged in corruption. Democrats really seem to be eyeing Kushner and his international business dealings and trying to make it a key campaign message. No, absolutely. Uh, I think they're trying to, uh, you know, use that to push back against Jared Kushner, push back against uh, former President Trump in this. And, you know, look, it, it sort of uh, is a juxtaposition with the you know, legal issues that Donald Trump is facing, some of which involve his own children. 
and obviously uh, Republicans pouncing on Hunter Biden for his international business dealings yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's making its way through the litigation. Uh, Trump, for his part, trying to give a boost to RFK Jr., there's this sense that uh, RFK Jr. might be hurting Biden in most states, emphasis folks on most states, more than hurting Trump. But I got to be frank with you, when you look at a state like Arizona, it actually hurts Trump more an RFK Jr. candidacy. So what gives? You know, look, I think it depends on the state. In a state like Pennsylvania, for example, I was just chatting with a source and they essentially said that's a state where it helps Trump and hurts Biden. So I think it depends on the state. It depends on what voters, um, you know, people are, you know, RFK is essentially attracting. So it's a case by case basis at the end of the day. And then, of course, President Biden canceling student debt for more than 277,000 borrowers. This has become quite the partisan issue. Absolutely. And, you know, you have President Biden very much under pressure from the left, from Democrats to pass this, um, you know, and forgive student loan debt. But the problem is uh, Republicans obviously very much pushing back against this. And, you know, Joe Biden needs to, do, you know, uh, fulfill this promise in a way or he feels he needs to politically fill, fulfill this promise in order to keep the left. Remember, um, there is a lot of pushback. Uh, to the the president over, um, you know, with progressives and younger voters, particularly on the issue of the Israel-Gaza war, for example, and student loan debt, climate. So they're trying to really tick off the boxes on some of these measures that, um, you know, are attractive to progressives. Hardest working reporter in Washington, Julia Manchester. Great stuff as always. Thanks, Jules. Thank you. A group of 43 Republican senators have signed a letter to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to demand an impeachment trial for Homeland Sec Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The letter says that the Senate has a constitutional responsibility to hold a trial. It comes after Schumer signaled this week that he would immediately table the charges once they were sent to the Senate. Six Republicans did not sign the letter, including some who questioned if the House met the standard for high crimes and misdemeanors. The House impeached Mayorkas in February, and they were set to deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate this week. Speaker Mike Johnson delayed that delivery earlier. Now the articles are set to be delivered to the Senate next week. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has banned South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem from their reservation land, becoming the third tribal nation to do so. The Tribal Council voted to ban Noem over what they have called racially charged comments made by the Mount Rushmore state governor. Noam, who has been rumored to be on Trump's VP shortlist, alleged that some tribal leaders are personally benefiting from Mexican drug cartel activity on reservations. This newest ban puts Noam at being barred from about 10% of the land that she governs. That's it for today's Daily Debrief. My name is Kevin Cirilli. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Hill's YouTube channel. Come on back here soon for the intersection between politics and policy.